So um, I got my intro to derivatives quiz back and I thought I would go over it with Academy. So the first question asked for us to take the derivatives of the following functions. So this first one, I would heavily suggest you rewrite it in a form that's more familiar to you uh, so you can apply the power rule easier. Minus two to the x minus one. Since this is not a multiplication or divi division, we're free to take these um, derivatives separately. So f prime of x will be equal to one third times five, five over three, x, one third minus one, which would be negative two thirds minus negative one times two to the, times x to the minus two. So this is a perfectly valid answer. If you want, you could also rewrite it. Since we know this is a negative exponent, it'll go to the bottom here. This is the cube root of x squared minus, or sorry, plus, 2 over x squared. And that's your answer to 1a. For b, we can use the quotient rule. So that would be the derivative of the first function multiplied by the entirety of the second function minus the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second function, which would just be 2x in this case. All, deriv all divided by the second function squared. So, just a little bit of algebra here. You'll get that 2x squared plus 10 minus 4x squared divided by, let's expand this, you'll get x to the 4th plus 10x squared plus 25 in the denominator. And we should probably really simplify the top. You'll get that 10 minus 2x squared divided by x to the fourth plus 10x squared plus 25 is your answer for the derivative here. On to the second question, which asks us to find the derivative of this function in terms of x, p, and q, where p and q are constants. So we can still use the power rule here. We'd move the three down and subtract one. So we'd have three times p the x squared plus 2px plus q, since this x goes to 0. And that would be our derivative for this function. So we need to carry on this answer to the next part, which asks us that when given that this derivative function is always greater than or equal to 0 for every x value, we have to show that p squared is always less than or equal to 3pq. So you may recognize that this is a quadratic, x squared, x, and constant term. So knowing a quadratic, we know that since it must, uh, if it's greater than equal, greater than or equal to zero for all x, that means it either has one solution, touching once, or no solutions at all. And this happens only when the discriminant is equal to zero or equal to zero, meaning there is a double solution here, here, or it's negative, which means that b squared minus 4ac should be less than or equal to zero. So if we look at our b, b term here, we have 2p squared minus four times our a term, which is 3p, 8, 4 times 3p times our c term, which was q, should be lesser than or equal to 0. We'll get that 4p squared minus 12pq should be lesser than or equal to 0. We can move that over, 4p squared, lesser than or equal to 12pq. And now we'll just divide both sides by 4 to get that p squared is lesser than or equal to 3p q, which is the same way they have it in the answer. So the third question requires us to analyze this uh, function and find the domain of x. Since we have a square root here, we know that the square root is only valid or only has real solutions when it is not less than zero. It can be equal to zero, which would result in the square root of zero, which is zero but it cannot be negative or would result in uh, complex numbers. So we'll get that this entire part here, one minus x squared 
has to be greater than or equal to zero. We can move the x squared over or move the one over, whichever you like. One is greater than or equal to x squared. Now, when we take the square root of x in an equation like this, one equals x squared, then we would have to consider both the plus and minus. But since this isn't an equation, we represent this by having an inequality on both sides. We'll get that negative one must be less than or equal to x, less than or equal to one. And this is the domain of our function here. Second part b asks us to show that the derivative of this function from above is equal to one minus two x squared divided by the square root of one minus x squared. So uh, we're not gonna touch this side. We can't really, because it's a derivative. We're gonna rewrite this segment as x times u to the one half, which is the same as the square root, where we let u equal to one minus x squared. If you're wondering about this operator, by the way, it just means take the derivative of. Okay, so to start off, we can use the product rule. We'll get that one multiplied by u, which is one minus x squared, or sorry, u to the one half, one minus x squared, plus x multiplied by the derivative of u, which is one half u to the minus one half, multiplied by the inside derivative, which is negative two x. We expand this out, we'll get that one minus x squared plus negative two x, all divided by two to the one minus x squared is where we're at now. So these twos will cancel because you can divide the top and bottom by two. And we want to put these on the same denominator since we're getting pretty close to what the, the answer uh, looks like. So I'm going to put this over one and you'll see why. Now we can multiply the top and bottom by the square root of one minus x squared. We can do this because these are, would cancel out to one. So we're multiplying by one secretly. What we'll get is that one minus x squared minus x. Sorry, I missed a squared here because this x and this x multiply. Minus x squared divided by the square root of one minus x squared. And obviously these two x squares combine to one minus two x squared divided by the square root of one minus x squared, which is the same as the question. In the next part, hence find all points where the gradient of the tangent to the original function is equal to zero. Now we already have the derivative. So all we need to do is set it equal to zero. And it's asking us to find all points. So that should be a hint that you may get more than one answer. So when we have a fraction like this, obviously only if the denominator, uh, the denominator does not matter. Only the numerator has to be equal to zero. So we'll get that one minus two x squared is equal to zero. Two x squared is equal to one. X squared is equal to one over two. And x is equal to the plus or minus the square root of one over two, which is the square root of one over the square root of two, which can be rationalized to root two over two, which you might remember from trig. So to find all points where uh, the gradient of the tangent to y equals x times the square root of x one minus x squared is equal to zero, we need to find the y values because it's asking for points. So your first point would be where your x is equal to the square root of two over two, and your y value would be, let's do some working out here for the y value. It would be the square root of two over two multiplied by one minus two over two of this squared. You would get that this part should be two over four, which is the same as one half. You'll get that one minus one half is one over two. And obviously we just showed that this is the square root of two over two. And these two multiplied will give you 
2 over 4, which is the same as 1 half. So that's your first point. And your second point, since we have a squared inside and we're multiplying um, outside here, you will also get that root 2 over 2, sorry, negative this time, and your y is 1 half. Yep, or it should be, or either negative. Let's check. So it would be root 2 over 2 times the square root of 1 minus, still 0 0.5, because squaring it makes it positive no matter what. So you get 1 over 2, this is negative. Yeah, you would get negative 1 half in the end. And that will be your second point. The fourth question gives you this graph to look at. It appears to be a cubic equation since it goes kind of like that with a min local minimum, local maximum. So the first part asks you to find the uh, derivative function with 2 as the input, which means you find at the point of x, 2, here is what is the slope. And the slope here would be 0, since we see this is not increasing or decreasing because it's perfectly touching 0. So we get that this is equal to 0. And the next part wants us to sketch f prime of x on the same axis. So since it's just a sketch, it doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. But two points to notice is uh, 2 and 4 at x equals 2 and 4. The rate of change is 0 since they're perfectly flat here. Which means that uh, when you draw your parabola, you need to make sure that your parabola has zeros at 2 and 4. You can mark this down here. So the reason why I know it's a parabola is because if the original function kind of looks like a cubic, then f prime of x by the power rule, we should get that the uh, derivative function should be a quadratic. So I was originally going to make a dedicated video just for this question. This is the fifth question. And we're given a function in terms of x squared and p of x. And all that we know about p of x is that the derivative of it is sine x. And we can solve this in terms of p of x without any uh, knowledge of integration, which is the reverse of derivation. So the derivative, simply just looking at this part, we can take that the derivative will be the derivative of this first term. And then subtract it by the derivative of the second term. So no need to look at this and worry. You can do these parts separately. So for here, we're going to use the product rule. 2x multiplied by p of x, which we don't know, plus the entirety of the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second function, p prime of x, multiplied by the inside function, x uh, goes to 1. And then we'll subtract. The derivative of p of x squared would be p prime x squared. And then we still have to multiply by the inside function's derivative. So if we do some algebra here, we'll get that 2x p x plus x squared. Let's sub in what we know p prime x to be, sine of x, subtracted by sine of, sorry, the 2x first, 2x sine x squared, and we'll get that this is our answer. So looked pretty complicated, but it wasn't too hard. P of x we could figure out with a bit of calculus uh, using the trig functions. Since we know that p prime of x was sine of x, going backward would give you one of the trig functions, but we'd have to include the constant. So the sixth and final question is a word problem. And I'm going to read it out because it was too, too much trouble to write out. An electric scooter at rest accelerates over a period of four seconds. 
the scooter's velocity, v, after t seconds, is given by the function v of t, which is equal to this here. The graph of v of t from 0 to 4 is shown, and it looks kind of like this. So there's originally a rest period, and there is a final displacement here. And there is a moment where you can see the acceleration here. So the first question asks us what v of t is. So up here, we'll see that our function, negative t cubed over 3, multiply, sorry, not multiply by, at plus 2t squared is our original function. So we can just apply the power rule. Let's write this a bit clearer. This negative one third t cubed plus two t squared. So with the power rule, this threes will cancel out and give you negative one t cubed, sorry, squared now, plus four t. So negative t squared plus four t with the powers in descending order. The final part and the final part of the quiz asks us to find the maximum acceleration in the fourth second period. Given that the scooter's acceleration a after t seconds is given by a of t, which is the same as v prime t, find the scooter's maximum acceleration between 0 and 4 seconds. So how I managed to solve this was to think of it um, graphically a little. So if you have a graph like this, you'll notice that we have an upside down quadratic as our acceleration graph and at zero it should have a y of zero since both of these there is no constant negative zero squared plus four times zero is still zero so we'll have a point at the origin so what we're looking for is this here this peak here and we know that the peak is also the axis of symmetry for the um, parabola. The formula for the axis of symmetry would be negative b over 2a. So let's plug in our numbers. Negative b, which is 4 in this case, divided by 2 times negative 1, would give you 2. So this gives us the x value for our axis of symmetry, which we now know is x equals 2. And of course, to find the acceleration, which would be the y value, so the height of where this point lays, we're going to plug our number back into our formula. So acceleration, the maximum, is equal to v prime of 2, which we know is the axis of symmetry, which is just negative 2 squared plus 4 times 2. This is 4, negative 4, plus 8, which is equal to 4 units per second as our final acceleration. I guess it would be units per second squared, but oh well, I'm not a physics student, so I hope this video helps you with the recent formative